हेलो 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 गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन वेलकम टू द मकरी वाचो होप दैट कंटिन्यू योर सेम मॉड्यूल दैट इज अ वेब एप्लीकेशन डेवलपमेंट एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टेक द न्यू सेशन दैट इज लास्ट सेशन ऑफ दिस कोर्स और दिस मॉड्यूल दैट इज सेशन नंबर 15 वेब सर्विसेज बट बिफोर दिस लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द प्रीवियस क्लास सेशन व्हाट वी हैव कवर्ड इन द लास्ट क्लास दैट इज सेशन नंबर 14 दैट इज कंपोनेंट that is what are the various components that is available for session number or that is what are the various components that is available for the cfmx technology so there are various components that is available that is a part of the object oriented as well as a udf library files so there are various technology that is available so there are various components so component functions are available for uh, doing the object oriented feature that is used as a part of the object oriented programming so in cfmx whatever the components whatever the scenario that is using that serves also as an interface to other technologies such as the flash and the web services so there are two technologies that is available one is a flash and one is the uh, one is a flash and one is uh, one service is available as a web services that is also a part of the web services a component usually contains a set of the functions so what is a component it contains a set of the function that also known as a method so component also contains a function that is known as a method and is simple to the or similar to the udf library file so whatever the library file that is available that contains various function that is similar to the udf binary files or udf library files for the application developer the components are hiding the details of the code so whatever the code or whatever the component that is available that hides the details of the code and focusing on the functionality so that focus on the functionality of the details and component technology permit the use of all c f m x tag and the function so whatever the function whatever the scenario that is using that taking care of the c f m x tag and the functions and then can that can access database and protocols for run systems and code which makes the technology extremely flexible so that makes the technology extremely flexible so that is used of the for run systems and the code the next is the authorization example So in session number seven, we discuss about the authorization and the authentication. That is, what is authorization? What is authentication? And it was pointed out that authorization and authentication were processes used in many applications for security reasons. So these are used for security reasons. That is, authorization and authentication. And these two concepts we have already discussed in session number seven. And these are the two important concepts. That is, authorization and the authentication. And basic requirement to the access codes are what are the basic requirements? the access code should have a large number of possible values compared with those used so whatever the number whatever the value that is used uh, that is used with the large number of possible values then the access code should have a or should be assigned randomly to the user so whatever the code that is assigned that is assigned randomly to the user that is also the basic requirement of the access code first requirement is there are multiple large number of possible values that is compared then that should be assigned randomly to the users then it should be unique that is not assigned to more than one that means the access sh code should be unique that is not assigned to more than one user an access code alone is not very safe precaution against the intruder so that is not very safe precaution against the intruder that is we are discussing then component for generating the unique random number that is what are the various component that is used for generating the unique random number that is used for the future authentication that is used for displaying the output that is used for displaying the single template that calls on a component and displays an unused access code that is requested so whatever the code whatever the uh, single template that is used and it displays the access codes figure one this displays the structure of a component with four functions there are four function that is displayed that is template calling that is a cf invoke there are four main functions one is a main function that is a cf object then there is a retrieve function then there is a generate function there is a check function so these are the four functions uh, that is available for these are the four main function that is used in the template calling that is a main cf object then retrieve then generate then check so this is a model of the component that is the access number that is uh, what are the various requirement of the access number and a main function controls the processes so whatever the process that is carried out that controls the process that is carried out by the main function and it should be compared or it can be compared with the main procedure of a traditional computer program and these are the four component that is available with the or these are the three main functions a method that should be included and these are the uh, four components or functions of the components are one is a main this is a main then there is a retrieve then there is a generate then there is a check now what is the role of the main function that controls everything or that controls the processing within the component so if i want to control the processing that is controlling is done by the main function and it turns the result to the calling template 
it also displays the result of all used excess number so if there is any excess number that is already used that displays the risk of all the used excess number that is the role of the main function then there is a retrieve function that retrieves a list of previously used number so what is the role of main that controls the processing what is the role of retrieve that retrieves a list of previously used number then generate then generates a random number within the specified area that means generate the number that is uh, we are given the range and that generates the number and any number that is applies between the 10,000 and the 99,999 then there is a check that checks if the generated number is unused already used that is if the generated number is unused or already used number of no that is a check function so one is a main then there is a retrieve then there is a generate then there is a check function and the component is invoked from the template that is the access number dot cfo and this template plays the role of an application needing the processing of the component so whatever the processing that is carried out that needs the processing of the component and for the purpose of demonstration this template displays a list of most recently generated access number so there is the most recent generated access number that is available that displays a list of the recent generated access number and the requested new number so there's a requested new number that is also available for the access number dot cfm this is a code for the access number dot cfm so there is a cf invoke then component equals to access component the method equals to main so method is given as a main and component is given as an access component so we can access a component then return variable is the access number then cf invoke so that means invoking function will be available invoking uh, invoking tag will be used that contains a component as an access components and the method equals to main then return variable what is the return variable that is the access number then there is a cf invoke that is closed then there is a center tag this is the h2 then phone color equals to hash 0000 ff then a vacant access number is this is displayed in the h2 tag that is a vacant access number is font will be closed and h2 will be closed then cf output then there is an access number cf output will be closed center will be closed so these are the various access number generated code that is invoked from the template that is the access number dot cfm and there is a cf uh, invoke tag that is also displayed in the line number two so this is line number two that calls a function uh, that is the main function within the component and the value of the variable that is the access number is expected to be returned by the components to the calling template. So whatever the calling template that is available that is displayed with the access number that is returned by the component with the, with the calling template. And these are the lines that is line 4 to 7 that is displayed for the output that is what is the output that is generated from this one. A component can also be used or can also be called by means of the CF object tag that is the create object function in the CF script via HTTP. Consider the RBV for this one, this one, this one. The component itself is displayed below. Now, the, what is the file extension? That is a CFC. Now, this is a component. This has a file extension that is dot CFC. Then CF component hint equals to this component returns an unused access number in the interval 10,000 to 99,999. That is a CF component, that is a hint that is available, that is a, this component returns an unused access number that is given in the interval 10,000 to 99,999. Then there is a main function, then CF function hint equals to controls the process. That means this is available as a function that hint is controls the process, the name equals to. Then CF set use number equals to retrieve, that is a retrieve function is called. Then CF set accept number equals to zero. Then CF loop, then condition equals to accept number equals to zero. That is accept number is given as a zero. So this is the access component dot CFC that is used for the how to display the or what are the various access component that is used. So this is our different extension that is dot CFC and there is a CF component equals to uh, given as a hint that is equals to the this component returns an unused access number in the interval 10,000 to 9999. And this is again the CF function that is used and the hint is controls the processes. So what is the hint that is available that controls the processes and the main name equals to main. 
So the name is given as a mean function and there is a CSL that is used that use number equals to retrieve. That is the number of retrieve or the retrieve number is available with the use number and then accept number equals to zero. Then check the condition, check the looping. Then what is the condition that accept number is equals to zero. Then CF set access number equals to generate. So that is available as access number that is generate. Then CF set accept number equals to check then access number then use number so there's the access number there is a use number that is available with the check then there is a cf loop that is a looping will be used and there is a cf return access number so there is a cf return that is available there is the access number uh, then there is a cf function will be closed over here so this is starting of the cf function this is the closing of the cf That means hint equals to control the process, then name equals to main, then CF set, then use number equals to retrieve, that is the retrieve function is available, then CF set, then accept number equals to zero, that is accept number is given as a zero, then uh, the condition is accept number is equals to zero, then generate function will be used and there is a check, uh, what is the checking or what is the checking criteria, that is the access number and the use number. Then there is a retrieve function that is used. Then there is a uh, retrieve function. What is the role of the retrieve function? That is a CF function hint equals to retrieve list of the use number. That is retrieving the list of the use number. The name equals to retrieve. Then CF if not file exists. That is a if file not exists, then session path, session, session 12, examples, component use number dot txt. That is a file number is used for the txt. Then session path is used, then there is a CF set, use number equals to 10,000 10, and the 99999. That is a CF set, then use number is given as a 10,000 and the 999999. Then CF file, then action equals to write, file equals to session path, then session, then session 12, examples, use number, output that is available with this one. Then CF file will be closed. So this is the opening of the CF file, and this is the closing of the CF if. Then there's a CF file, then action equals to read. The action is given as a read, then file is given as a session dot path. So file is given as a file is a session dot path, then session, then session 12, examples, component, use number dot txt. That is the action is given as a read. Now the action is on the read only file, then the file is given as a session dot path, then session, then session 12, examples, and so on. Then CF return use number. So what is the returning value? What is the CF return? That is a use number. Then there is a closing of the CF function. This is the opening of the CF function and the task will be assigned. Then there is a closing of the CF function. Then there is a generate. That is a generate function is available over here. Then there is a CF function. Then hint equals to generate a random number in the interval 10,000 to 999999. So the Random number is given in the interval that is a 10,000 to 99,999 and the name is given as a generate. That means name is given as a generate. So the CF function that is available that is used as a hint that generates a random number in the interval 10,000 to 999999. Then there is a CF set. Then tamp equals to randomize. There is a randomize function. So set the temp value as a randomized, then second now. That means setting the value of the randomized. Then there is a second, then there is a now function. Then there is a CF set, the nexus number equals to number of rand range. So number of the random range. That means we can take the any 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 range, we can take any value that is a random range that is between the 10,000 and the 99,999. Then there is a CF return, then there is the excess number. That is a CF return, then there is the excess number. That means returning the value of the excess number that is used for uh, returning the excess number. So this is the CF set. Now the accept number is given as a one value. So the accept number is given as a one value. Then there is a looping. What is the looping? Then index equals to i, list equals to use number. Then there is a delimiter. The delimiter is used as a comma. Then CF if hash i equals to excess number. Now check the condition if the i is equals to the excess number then cf set except number equals to zero. That is given as the accept number equals to zero. Then cf break the break function will be used or the cf break will be available. Then there is a cf uh, if except number equals to one. That is a cf if that is accept number is equals to the one. Then cf set then use number equals to list append. So there is a list append that is used that is used as a list append. Then there is a use number excess number etc.
then the file is given as a write. Now the action is write. First of all, the action is read. Now in this part, action is read. Now the action is available as a write. Then the file equals to session path, then session, then session 12, then example that is available as example, then component, then use number dot txt, then output equals to use number. So output is available as a use number. Then there is a CF if that is the closing of the CF if. Then there is a CF return, then there is a accept number. So there is a CF return. Uh, then there is a return accept number that is given as accept number. Then there is a CF function. Then there is a CF component. So this is the closing of the component. This is the closing of the CF component. This is the closing of the CF function. Now the function retrieve test if a file use number dot txt exist. Now retrieve a test is a file that is a use number dot txt exist and create the file if not. That means retrieve function test if the file exists or not. If the file exists, it will create the file. If not, it is not creating the and the function then retrieves the file with all previously used number that is used as a file in this. Now there is an interception that is a component can be stored in the folder of the application. But that folder is known as the interception. So its properties are can be inspected by using the so-called interception. So what is the interception in which the files are stored? That is a folder in which the files are stored by the method by which with the properties can be inspected by so-called known as an interception. And when we know or when we call the URL of the component by means of the browser, this call activity is the CFC Explorer, which requires which requires your username and the password. So that requires the username and the password, and it displays a page with the meta information that is a information about the information that is the data information about the this is the figure that demonstrates the part of the information for the component access number dot cfc. Note that the addresses given are not the real addresses. So whatever the address that is given, that is not as the given as a access number dot cfc. Now come to the next session. That is session number fifteen. That is the web services. Now, session number 15 is the web services. What are the various web services that is available? So web services are the last option for reusing the codes to be discussed in this course. So whatever the uh, reusing code that we have discussed, that is the last part of this, uh, or the last option that is used for the reusing the code that is discussed in this course. In addition to reusing the code, so in addition to the reusing of the code, web services also contribute to making web processing more efficient by distributed processing. So whatever the distributed processing that is available, uh, that is used to contribute to making the web processing more efficient by distributing or by distributed the processing because they permits a number of applications on different locations. So whatever the number of applications that permits or whatever the application that is available that permits a number of applications on different locations to share as well software as computing facilities. So whatever the computing facilities that is available, that is a part of the application, that is a part of the number of the applications on different locations to share as well as software as computing facilities. Now the technology that can be best can be explained by figure one. So the technology that is can be explained by figure number one. Now assume a number that is key of the end user. So assume a number that is of the key of the end user. This is the end user one. This is the end user application. Then there's the end user K. So this is end user one. Then there is the application one. Then there is a the web service one. Then this is the end user K application M. Then the web service M. So these are the various web services that is available. These are the various application that is available in this. This is figure number one. That is the interaction among the end users, applications, and the web services. That requesting the application. That requesting the application from a set of the M servers. And some of the applications that requires, however, special components residing in the second set of the N server. So there's a uh, that resides in the second set of the N servers, which are providing the results of their component as a web services. That providing the result as a component as a web services. 
and services are like the applications of the first set of servers offered on the net and can be integrated in the different applications that can be offered as a different application that can be integrated in the different application just as if they were local or they they were local components if there are local component that can be integrated into different applications and to the end users the application the request will appear if the applications are executed by the application server so whatever the application server whatever the scenario that is available that is requested for the application server and in the figure it is an example uh, assume that the end users i request both application 1 and m that is using the end user that is the k only request the application m and to deliver application 1 needs both web services 1 and n while application m only needs the web service m now, what is a web service? That is a concept which has entered the web arena in the last few years. That is a web service. So, whatever the service that is available on the internet, that is known as a web service. So, web service is a concept which has entered the web arena in the last few years. Even though the technology is supported by major vendors and seem to have a potential for contributing to remote, distributed processing on the net is still controversial. That means, uh, whatever the distributed system that is uh, still in the controversy, uh, who are making the distribution as a remote and it uses a set of standard technology that includes what are the various technologies that is available within the web service that is tcp ip http xml then universal description discovery and integration so tcp uh, full form of tcp is Transmission Control Protocol, Internet Protocol. This is the protocols or set of the protocol that is available over the internet that is a part of the web service. Then there is a HTTP that is a Hypertext Transfer Protocol. This is again the protocol that is used for transferring the content or navigating from one place to another that is a HTTP. Then there is a XML that is an extensible markup language. Uh, this is a language that is used for writing the codes that is XML. Then uh, next is a uh, universal description that is the next part that is a uh, universal description means that is a description discovery and integration that is UDDI so these are the four standards or these are the some standards that is available uh, including in the web services then web service description language that is a WSDL that is a web services description language then simple object access protocol that is a so that is simple object access protocol so the web service is an open source technology that is supported by many important actors in the web domain that is supported by many of the important actors that is a part of the web domain and web service is said to be created by its developer and consumed by their users that is developed by their developers that is created by the developers and consumed by their users that is developed by the developers on the internet site now this is the universal description discovery and the integration that is uddi so that is used uh, for the uddi that is a facility that is used for locating the sources of the web services so if there are the sources that is available for the web services that is concerned with the uddi now yeah. a local uh, enterprise restricted on or an open public registry and major or the market actors are as IBM and the Microsoft are running global UDDI. So, so they have a, or the whatever the such as the IBM, such as the IBM and the Microsoft are running the global UDDI. So they have a running or they have a global or they have a we can say the tendency of the UDDI. And the popular or the popular UDDI is the X methods to which you can uh, on or we, you get your own web service registered. Then there is a web service description language. So this is a language that is available. As a language is known as the XML. That is the extensible markup language. That is a format for describing the web or the net services. And the description of web services are therefore standardized in an XML based document prepared by the web service description language. So that is a language that is available as a WSDL. That is a web service description language. And that contains or describes the requirement for consuming a web service that is a WSDL. So CFMX developer, the uh, developer does not need to be concerned about writing the WSDL for the component he or she develop. So whatever the component that he or she develop, that is developed automatically by the CFMX. As we shall uh, see later in this session, likewise to view the uh, WSDL of an existing component does not require more than typing the URL. 
So whatever the URL, whatever the time metric is that is available, that is a part of the URL with the store shows exchange. A visit to the W3C gives useful and official information on the web services. That is a part of the web services. That is a CFMS, that is a part of the CFMS, that is a w or WSDL, that is a web services description language, that is a Excel format, or that is an XML language, that is a extensible markup language describing the next services. So for describing the next services that is available for the web services description language. Next is simple object access protocol that is a SOAP that provides an XML messaging framework used by web services. So that provides an XML messaging uh, framework. So that is a SOAP that is used by the web services and for a CFMX developer, it is not necessary to learn the SOAP technology. So it is not necessary to learn the SOAP technology or be at all concerned about it since it is handled automatically by the CFMX web service technology. So it is handled by the CFMX web service technology that is a SOAP. This is one of the important concepts. This is one of the messaging framework, important messaging framework that is used as an XML message framework. Then web services creation and consumption in CFMX. That is how to create and consume in the CFMX. So consider the following scenario. A number of developers are working on different web applications within a worldwide organization. So there are a number of developers that are work or that work on a different web applications within the worldwide organizations. And applications needs all access code authent authorization and the course must be unique for each independent of the application. That is needed for the access code, that is the authorization method that is used for the creation and the consumption in the CFMX. And this is one of the example, uh, that is a web service example. So we use a component developer that is used as a CFMX web services and the component that are created with the web services and each CF function tag in a web service component needs an attribute that is the access equals to remote. Now the access is given as a remote and the attribute that is the return type is given as a string number boolean etc. So X is given as a remote and the return type is given as a string. And the use of a web service is referred to as a service consumption. So that is the use of the web service that is referred to as a service consumption. Now application needs the support from the web service must only or must have to wait to call on the service that is done by the invoke function. And the WSTL of the service that is used as an alias that is registered by the CFMX administrator of the consumer server that is WSTL. And the calling in is uh, illustrated by access number dot CFM template, which requests a unique access code. That requests a unique access code and displays a received code for the client who wants to see the example. So who wants to see the example that is displayed with the help of the received code. A template is very similar to that used in the component example. So whatever the template, whatever the coding that is available, that code will be generated by the component that is access number dot CFM. The only difference is other attributes in the CF invoke tag. Note that the web services and the return variable are the required attributes. Now the web service is supposed to be registered by the CFMS administration of the consuming server. So whatever the consuming server that is registered by the CFMS administrator of the consuming server and the name LAR that is the access number. This is the access number dot CFM. This is the CF invoke, then web service equals to access number, then method equals to main, then return variable is equal to access number, then CF invoke will be closed. So this is the starting of the CF invoke, this is the closing of the CF invoke. Then there is a the center tag, then there is a H2 tag. That means the center tag is used, then there is a H2 tag, that phone color equals to this one, that is a bucket access number is this one. Then CF output, access number, CF output will be closed, center will be closed. So web services are implemented in this way. There is no access number for this one. So there is no access number that is given for the web services that is access number dot CFC. These are the various web services that is available with this one. And this is the end of this session, end of this uh, module. So this is the access number that is generated with the hint that the component has the access number in the hint. Now about the implementation of the example, how it is implemented by using the client and the server approach. So to demonstrate a web service or to, to demonstrate a web service, we need a client and two servers. There are two clients or there is a one client and there are two servers that is available 
that is the client and two servers an application server consuming the web service of the second so web application server consumes the web service of the second that is there are clients and the uh, server that is the application server that consumes the processes this is the exercise that is given in this one so there are uh, three parts of this exercise there are three parts or four parts of this exercise that is exercises then there is a bibliography for further study that is this bibliography for the studies that is the bibliographic for further studies and this is the ending of this module so we have wind up this module in the today's class that is the web application development and from monday onwards i am going to start with the new module uh, that is your quality systems in it that is very small module that is only for 15 days module that is how to use the uh, or what are the various quality system that is represented in the it that is the information technology Right. So what are the quality systems that is available in IT? So that's all for today's session and we will meet tomorrow, uh, we will meet on Monday, that is the next next week with a new module that is the quality, quality systems in the IT. Thanks a lot everyone. Bye-bye. Enjoy the weekend.